Gastroesophageal reflux disease is a condition when stomach content appears in the esophagus. Simple as that. The more difficult question is to explain why it happens. In normal condition, after the intake of food, food cross the esophagus and income to the stomach. And all food that appears in the stomach is supposed to go into the duodenum. But sometimes some portion of food can leak from the stomach back to the esophagus. And this condition we call gastroesophageal reflux disease. So when we intake food, food under the force of gravity from the esophagus comes to the stomach. And what we have to know is that esophagus is located in the thoracic cavity. So the pressure inside the esophagus is equal to intrathoracic pressure and it's approximately zero. Stomach is located in the abdominal cavity and the pressure inside the stomach is equal to intraabdominal pressure and it's approximately 6. Because pressure inside the stomach is higher than the pressure inside the esophagus, stomach content tends to flow back into the esophagus by the pressure gradient. And the only structure that prevents reflux of the stomach content is lower esophageal sphincter. Lower esophageal sphincter, by contraction, creates enough resistance to stop the retrograde flow into the esophagus. Now, to explain this, we can write retrograde flow as a formula. So, retrograde flow of the stomach content will be equal to pressure inside the stomach minus pressure inside the esophagus divided on resistance that is created by the lower esophageal sphincter. Now, as we know, resistance is inversely proportional to the force power of radius. So, because pressure inside the esophagus is approximately zero, there are only two major factors that determine retrograde flow. It's intraabdominal pressure that creates pressure inside the stomach and the resistance of the lower esophageal sphincter, which is determined by the radius of the sphincter. First of all, about the resistance of the lower esophageal sphincter. With contraction of the lower esophageal sphincter, the radius of the lower esophageal sphincter decreases, and decrease in radius causes increase in resistance. Increase in resistance causes decrease in flow through the lower esophageal sphincter. So basically, with adequate contraction of the lower esophageal sphincter, there will be no retrograde flow. So the most crucial concept is that in normal condition, when food appears in the stomach, lower esophageal sphincter contracts, and full contraction of the lower esophageal sphincter creates maximal resistance to flow, and with maximal resistance there will be no retrograde flow. This is the major function of the lower esophageal sphincter, and it's the reason why in normal condition we do not have gastroesophageal reflux disease. But sometimes, something can go wrong. First of all, we have risk factors that can decrease the resistance of the lower esophageal sphincter. Alcohol, smoking, chocolate, estrogens and progesterone. All of them cause relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. With relaxation, radius increase, thereby resistance decrease. And because resistance decrease, flow increase. So now, in relaxed state, stomach content pass lower esophageal sphincter and enters into the esophagus. And the presence of the stomach content inside the esophagus we call GRD. The next group of factors cause increase in intragastric pressure. For example, very tight bowel cause increase in abdominal pressure. And because abdominal pressure increase, intragastric pressure also increase. And increase in intragastric pressure cause increase in retrograde flow. So basically, in this case, intragastric pressure overcomes the resistance created by the lower esophageal sphincter, and this permits intragastric content to pass through lower esophageal sphincter into the esophagus. And the presence of the stomach content inside the esophagus we call GRD. For example, in pregnancy, we have a combination of factors. In pregnancy, gravid uterus cause increase in intraabdominal pressure. Increase in intraabdominal pressure cause increase in intragastric pressure. As a result, retrograde flow will increase. 
But also during pregnancy, the level of estrogens and progesterone is significantly higher than normal. And as we know, they cause the relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. With relaxation, radius increase, thereby resistance decrease. And with decrease in resistance, retrograde flow will increase. So now intragastric content can pass through lower esophageal sphincter and enter into the esophagus. And the presence of the stomach content inside the esophagus we call GRD. So pregnancy greatly predisposed to GRD, especially during the last trimester. But important that after the childbirth, GRD basically disappears. Because first of all, without a fetus, intraabdominal and thereby intragastric pressure will normalize. And also, the level of estrogens and progesterone will come back to normal values. And thereby, there will be no excessive relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. So, resistance will be normal. And if these two factors come back to normal, then there will be no retrograde flow, and thereby no GRD. Another factor is delayed gastric emptying. Delayed gastric emptying cause increasing intragastric pressure. The concept here is that patients with poorly controlled diabetes mellitus, for example, have very high blood glucose level. And constantly increased glucose level leads to autonomic neuropathy that cause decrease in gastric motility. And the more food accumulates in the stomach, the higher becomes intragastric pressure and thereby the higher becomes the pressure difference between the stomach and the esophagus. So this creates a significant force that pushes stomach content into the esophagus. For some period of time, lower esophageal sphincter can hold back, but with further progression of diabetes, autonomic neuropathy becomes more severe, and at some point, intragastric pressure overwhelms the resistance created by the lower esophageal sphincter, and this will cause retrograde flow. And the presence of the stomach content inside the esophagus we call GRD. Another factor is obesity. In obese patients, the amount of fat in omentum is very high, and such enlarged omentum creates high intraabdominal pressure and thereby high intragastric pressure. So as a result, pressure difference increases, and this basically creates a retrograde flow. But also in obese patients, the level of estrogens is significantly higher than normal. As we know, estrogens cause relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. With relaxation, radius increase, thereby resistance decrease. With decrease in resistance, retrograde flow increase. So these two factors combine cause retrograde flow of the stomach content into the esophagus. And exactly this condition we call GRD. Another factor is hiatal hernia. The concept here is that hiatal hernia is a type of hernia where abdominal organs, typically the stomach, enters through an opening in the diaphragm into the thoracic cavity. So in hiatal hernia, intragastric pressure mostly remains the same, but the function of the lower esophageal sphincter becomes completely disrupted. And in such pathological state, lower esophageal sphincter cannot create resistance to stop retrograde flow. As a result, stomach content without any obstacle by pressure gradient comes into the esophagus. And such retrograde flow we call GRD. Also, we have several classes of medications that can trigger GRD. First of all, it's calcium channels blockers. Because with blockage of calcium channels, calcium influx into the smooth muscle cells will decrease. And because the force of contraction depends on the amount of calcium, this will cause decrease in force of contraction, or we can say this will cause relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. With relaxation, radius of the lower esophageal sphincter will increase, and with increase in radius, resistance decrease. With decrease in resistance, a retrograde flow increase. So stomach content will enter into the esophagus, and the presence of intragastric content inside the esophagus we call GRD. By the relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter, GRD can be provoked by anticholinergic medications, by tricyclic antidepressants, 
and also by benzodiazepines, they all decrease the resistance of the lower esophageal sphincter. <laughs>